Hello everyone and welcome back to Java. This is the best Mac tutorials and today we're going to be talking about um, threads and uh, one uh, kind of case study on how threads be used a lot. In case I didn't mention this is tutorial number 10 and I'm the best Mac tutorials even though I'm on a PC. Because um, PCs actually are better. They're cheaper, they're um, more capable. Macs are still, let me close this, Macs are still perfectly usable but I don't know. You can build your own PC cheaper, faster, way better for gaming. Anyway, uh, and programming. So, uh, today we're going to be talking about threads, and uh, threads was an idea mentioned uh, in the last video's comment section by FigFT. Thank you. I completely forgot about threads. Well, I didn't forget about them, but I forgot to talk about them because um, I don't know why I forgot to talk about threads. That's actually a very important part of Java, and today, well, any almost any language currently. Most programming involves threads to some extent, even if you're not managing them yourself. Today we're going to be going over just the real basics of threads, the bare minimum you need to know to get going with them, uh, and then at some later point in time, 11 through 15 tutorials, uh, tutorials 11, 12, 13, 14, tutorial 15, are probably all going to be GUI elements. Uh, that's things like buttons, uh, lists, uh, images, windows, and how to make it so when one closes the whole program doesn't close. Uh, stuff like that. So we'll be talking about that and uh, a lot of other cool things with GUI elements. We won't be getting really advanced into GUIs, but we'll get in, be getting far enough to make applications with multiple buttons uh, that each button, you know, will pop up a list of stuff. Users can add to it. It'll save data. We'll be, we'll be through the tutorials, building probably one or two big programs in multiple stages. But anyway, this is threads, not GUI, so I'll stop talking about GUIs. GUI is graphical user interface, by the way. Uh, threads are basically instances of a program that are running. Now, threads weren't as big of a thing back when we had single core processors, uh, but nowadays with um, dual core, quad core, hexacore, uh, and even servers with 8 or 16 total cores, um, i7s with 8 um, logical cores once you uh, throw in your hyper threading, things like that um, really demand that uh, you, write, you write any kind of uh, intensive application to use threads and so today we're not going to be going into real advanced things about threads of how to create them and then join them all together at a certain point and then call them out with different information all that kind of stuff uh, we're just going to be focusing on um, their use in something like a port scanner for network diagnostics uh, so one thing to mention with port scanning uh, it is basically you can imagine a port on a network as like a road uh, a port is a road or an entryway that stuff can go in and out you can almost imagine it like a giant building with about uh, about 65,000 or so doors all the way around. Some of them are locked, some of them are open, and the ones that are open have someone there waiting to see who's there generally. Um, but, so obviously, with that um, whole kind of uh, analogy there comes the part of it would be um, generally not allowed to for you to just go to random houses and jiggle the doors to see if they're open <laughs> or if they're open just walk in obviously so uh, same applies to port scanning uh, you cannot you're not allowed to really uh, scan things that don't belong to you things you aren't authorized to so don't go around scanning Yahoo and Google and stuff like that that's just not a good idea so but it's useful for internal network testing it's useful for um, you know testing what's open on your own network testing your own network from an outside source, things like that. And so this one's going to be sending basically send flood packets which try to establish a connection to a port and if they time out then the port's closed, we presume, and if it makes a connection then the port sh must be open. And sometimes a port will be open but it won't work for a service because it's a different service running on that port than you think, but it's still open. So all it's going to tell us is that the port is open. So, it's actually pretty simple to write a port scanner in Java, even make it multi-threaded is quite an easy task. So let's just do it non-multi-threaded to start with so we can see the huge, huge performance difference between multi-threaded and non-multi-threaded. So let's create a couple of class variables here. Private string host and private int port. Actually, no. Create that later. But uh, in here we're going to do host equals localhost. And we're going to do a for loop for int i equals 1, not 0, 1, because I want to start on port number 1, not 0. i is less than, let's scan the first 10,000, so 10,001, i increment, the reason I did 10,001 is because I did less than, I could also do e less than or equal to, and then 10,000 instead. So, uh, 
the way we um, private static string. Sorry about that. Uh, the way we scan, the way we um, test to see what ports open, is we try to make a socket connection to it. So we do something like this: socket socket equals new socket host and i. Uh, not a very um, exact or not a very, uh, it's a very redundant statement. Socket, socket equals new socket, but that's what you do. We're going to have to throw a try-catch block around it, and uh, these are the two exceptions that it's likely to throw. Now, I only care about unknown host exceptions, so I'm just going to turn this to a generic exception. Here, I'm going to delete IO, and this will be E2. Um, but, however, our catches, I, I like all the braces lined up. Uh, e two dot print stack trace with just a regular exception, whereas with an unknown host exception, um, that's a, what we'd probably be throwing. However, I'm just going to delete this, and I'm just going to ex a, uh, catch an exception and print out that the port wasn't open. So system dot out dot print len the port. Oops. Actually, let's just do port plus i plus is not open. And the three dots, three ellipses, and the exclamation mark, just because we can. And so this is called whenever this socket fails, whenever it times out, whenever it, whenever it gets rejected, or the connection gets dropped. This exception here in this catch block is called. So if this gets called, the port scanning didn't go as intended, aka the port connection wasn't able to be established, the send flood packet was rejected, whatever. And um, so if this succeeds, though, it'll go on to the next line instead of jumping to the catch block. And we'll do system.out.println port plus i plus is open. And put a space here. And let's do four ellipses, just because we can. Because why not, right? And so if we run this, this is a pretty basic program. You'll see how slow it is. Port 1 is not open. Port 2 is not open. Port 3 is not open. Port 4 is not open. And as you can see, it's just kind of dragging on with that. Takes about a second between each one as you can see. That's about the timeout time. Um, the overhead is very minimal as you can see. Um, well, you can't see it right now, but if I brought up my uh, any kind of system monitor or something, you'd see CPU usage, at least from this, is very, very low. So it's not it's not a very um, CPU intensive program. And so even if I was on a single core processor, multi-threading this would still give me a huge advantage because most of the time here is spent not processing, but just waiting. And then once it waits, then it makes a new one. What if you could start them all at the same time, uh, relatively speaking, close to the same time, and then all the ones that don't time out, you print out that they're open. So if we keep waiting, we'll eventually find an open port. And as you, I think port 80 on this computer is open right now. I think uh, HTTP client is bound to it. So let's wait till 80. Actually, I'm bored. Let's change this to 78. So 78, 79, 80. Notice how fast 79 and then 80 came at like the same time. That's because 80 was so quick to establish that connection. It just jumped right in there and was like, yeah, it's open. That uh, we really don't need... Um, that, that thread didn't have to, not that thread, sorry, it's not a thread yet, that socket didn't have to like close or anything, uh, it didn't have to wait for a timeout, it just said, yep, we're open, and then it moved on. So let's uh, be good and close our socket, like that, good socket practice. It's like, you haven't used your socket, actually I've used it for a ton. Um, but let's multi-thread this, let's make it into something more than what it currently is. So let's, we're going to put this in the port thread over here, let's start I at uh, z one again, not zero. I'm gonna start. I had zero because I just said not to, <laughs> and then we'll create a new thread of this. Our port thread. Now our port th thread class right now is pretty bare, so I'm gonna populate it with some code. Uh, that code's gonna be a little bit more extensive than the previous one because it does include uh, a couple things that it needs to do uh, in order to be a thread, in order to be able to be instantiated as a thread, initialized as a thread, whatever you want to call it, but it's going to be basically the same thing. And so that code that I just X'd out, I did control X, I cut it, we'll be able to put that right back in there, maybe edit a couple things. So we're going to create a private string called host and a private int called port. The port's going to hold whatever port we're going to scan. The host string is going to contain the host we're scanning. Local host 192.168.0.6, 192.168.2.4, whatever. So uh, it'll scan that port, and, that, and those two will be provided during construction. So 
because that will do our constructor public port thread uh, string host and int port because we want to those are the uh, construction parameters passed to it that's when you create the object and you pass two parameters that's what these are you have to pass a string and then an integer and it'll sort it all out so you want to do this dot host equals host and this dot port equals port and what this the, what the this keyword does uh, I was gonna say what this this keyword does and it's like what <laughs> it's basically saying uh, this class variable so this dot host is this equals host which is this if you don't want to worry about the confusion with the this Java keyword just do private string host private int port and then here do host to scan port to scan and so then there will be no name confusion and you want to use the this keyword uh, it's just pro tip if you want to do that and be fancy so that's the end of our constructor actually constructor is very very simple now we're going to want to write a run method now public void run run is uh, closely related to threads thread.start calls run essentially so let's just paste our previous code in there now I'm going to show you something interesting here in just a second um, port plus port port plus port uh, if I was to run this right now this in itself it would do absolutely nothing because it doesn't have a main class so you can't call a method in it if you don't run anything that does have a main class unless you're talking about applets but we're not talking about those right now and honestly I probably won't ever cover applets or at least I don't really intend to because one they're kind of fading out and two there's really not much use for them Java web starts kind of a better solution a lot of the times and but whatever anyway I digress but um, main program isn't instantiating it at all this isn't being instantiated these aren't being populated this isn't being run so we don't expect anything to really come out anyway but it's a good way to compile to make sure everything checks out. So we we'll want to put a up here port thread extends thread. That gives it the ability to um, be a thread basically. To uh, it extends thread, so it builds on top of thread. Uh, thread is a specific thing in Java, like we've talked about what a thread is, and so you will want to keep that it extends thread in there. You want to put that in. And so let's, uh, and then after we close, we can just return. Don't need, don't need it to keep it running. We can just return it there. And uh, I think now we'll go into how you actually create the thread. So to create a thread, you'll do something along the line of, um, we call it port thread t equals new port thread. And the host will be local host. Uh, what am I doing? And the port will be i, just like that. So string integer. Now, what's it yelling at us about? It cannot be resolved to a type. It's saying, oh, it's not here. I can't find it. Port thread. Why can't I find it? Well, let's save it. See if it notices it's here at all. You spelled it right. T-H-R-E-A-D. Port thread. Port thread. But we have a capital P. Java is very case sensitive, so that was my mistake. Uh, port thread T equals new port thread. And then we pass it our parameters. Then T dot start calls that run. So let's do it without t.start right now. Let's just run it and see what happens. Nothing exciting. t.start, however, calls that run method we have. So suddenly we have all this spam of things that are open, things that aren't open. And obviously that's not very effective for, I mean, we don't want to know all the ports that aren't open. If it tells us what ports are open, we can deduce what's not open. The reason I had this is so that we could show some kind of progress when it's really slow. When it's really fast, this actually just slows it down. So, let's try this again, and it'll tell us all the ports that are open. As you can see, that is quite a few ports. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger here. Port 445, 135, 554, 902, 912, 443. One disadvantage of this, uh, 80 is open. There's a lot of ports on here that should be open, and a lot of them that shouldn't be open, yeah, but this is just a demo. But um, generally speaking, Yo, these are not going to be ordered. They're going to be in some kind of order, as you can see. Most of the three digits are before most of the four digits, which, if we scan further, be more than would be before most of the um, five digits. If there were any five-digit ports open on this computer, <coughs> which there are not at currently, but um, so I'm not scanning above ten thousand. They're not open. But uh, if you were to do a full scan, you would want, to, of course, scan everything. Um, but if you did want these to be in order, displayed to the user, you know, so it said 80, 
then said 135, then said 443, then 445, then 554. If you wanted it to be in order like that, all nice and neat, what you'd want to do is probably have each thread, um, if, if it is actually a port that is open, then it would write, uh, append to a file the port that it found is open, and then this main program, after waiting maybe two seconds, would then jump in and say, hey all, and it'd read from the file, and then it would put everything in order. Uh, or maybe you could even have the thread smart enough to um, to read off all the data and sort it and insert uh, their open port uh, where it should be. But uh, anyway, you would just kind of write it to a file and then have uh, each thread would write its own to a file if the port if it found the port was open. Then this main program would just run around, grab the contents of that file, uh, put it into a array list or something, use collections.sort on it, and then display it out to the user in a nice, um, you know, numerically ordered way. And so, obviously, that can't happen here because the the threads, while we do create the threads in a uh, sequential order, you know, one before two, two before three, three before four, four before ten trillion, we um, some ports are a little bit faster on the response. So 445 might show up right before 443, as we saw earlier, or even 135 might show after the 400s. And so generally they'll stay in some kind of parameters of order, but no guarantees. Uh, if you really want them to be nice and ordered for anything, uh, just save them, write them to a file and read them out is the easy way. Uh, or you can also have uh, all the threads kind of join back later on in this program, and we can communicate back and forth as to whether it, the port worked or not. Um, so there's more robust and less robust ways to do this, of course. But uh, that's the basics on how to use threads. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time.